Today, we're talking with Rob O'Brien, who is the head of international technology for ITV Studios. We're discussing the digital transformation of television production, and we're here in McAllen, Texas with Zoho. ITV PLC is a commercial broadcaster, the biggest in the UK, and a production business. I'm the head of international technology, but that means as I look after the technology outside of the UK and the US. I operate with a team in 10 countries and we look after both the corporate technologies, so the networks and the servers and the workplace technology, and also the production technology. I'm also part of the Global Innovation Hub and I work with our co-chairs on um, implementing innovative and new technologies into our business. You have a very broad international team, a very large footprint. Yes, we're operating in 13 countries, 16 production labels. It is a very eclectic mix of people that we work with and, and different types of companies that we deal with. But yeah, it's very broad. We're discussing digital transformation. Streaming services like Disney and Netflix have changed television in so many ways. How does an organization like ITV manage in response to this? ITV's broadcast business has responded to this with a product called ITVX, which is our streaming platform. We got 3 billion streams in the last year, and we're looking at increasing our output for streamers and offering a compelling programming for those, so much so that by 2026, we're looking at having 30% of our production uh, being for streamers. What is the impact of all of this on your organization, on your team, which is so technology-based? We want to really enable our creatives with the technology. And that's the most important thing that we try to do, I think, inside my part of the business. To do that, we're looking at uh, innovative ways of delivering new solutions to make better programs for, for our clients. Innovation has always been part of program making, from black and white television to color, SD to HD, you know, color now to HDR. And what we're trying to do is use these technologies to create the best possible product for our customers, both in terms of commercial value, but also in terms of uh, customer position. I have to imagine that the workflows and the processes of keeping this organized and running must be so complex, so challenging. We have many budgets, many schedules of work, many sort of run orders and different schematics of things that we don't do. We have a lot of kind of paperwork that goes alongside any given production. And on any given day, we have four or 500 productions uh, in production. So how much of your work then is around new technologies, better ways of working, really thinking through the innovation aspects? Within ITV, we have something called the Global Innovation Hub, which is led by some of our directors of production, which is all about learning about innovation, seeing where we can enhance our workflows and our systems and our processes with new tech, you know, bleeding edge technology, um, and understanding where we can add value to, to our production, where we stand generally is like twinning the technology with what the creatives want to make the best possible shows. When you say twinning the technology, can you elaborate on that? We're talking about giving the creatives and the production teams you know, a good underlying technology stack that really enables them to be as efficient as they possibly can and work as quickly and as efficiently as they can on their, on their shows. Can you give an example of that? We use Zoho. We're here with Zoho today. Mm -hmm. uh, we use it for some of our group risk processes. So we're capturing into Zoho a lot of information about our TV shows right up front of the production process. And then we're bringing that into kind of a single data set, which can then be scrutinized and reviewed and changed uh, very quickly in a single platform. We are here at Zoho Day 2024 in McAllen, Texas. And I appreciate that Zoho is making our conversation possible. So... Tell us about your work with Zoho. Give us an overview of that. So we've been using Zoho, uh, Michael, for a few years within, within ITV Studios. So we started looking at kind of a system that could track our development processes. So by development, I mean ITV is constantly coming up with ideas for new shows. We want to bring those ideas into a single database so that we can A, protect those ideas, but also share them around the group in the right way and make sure we're not pitching the same thing to the same broadcaster three or four times, for example. I'm not saying that we did that in the past, but this enables us to ensure that we don't do stuff like that. So kind of that heavyweight spreadsheet scrutiny was required, and so had kind of created field kind of avoid from there. Later, and during COVID, we realized that we needed a better platform for how we manage our TV shows and our group risk systems. We're making 400 or 500 productions on any given day. That's a large amount of content. Now, before we had a Zoho system, we had teams of people with lots of unstructured data. 
bringing that kind of information about where the shows are being made, who was in the crew, what the kind of screw schedules were, in sort of many different places. It wasn't very quick. And during COVID, when we needed to make decisions really quickly, it became apparent that we needed something a bit better than kind of manual, unstructured data. So we looked into the market, looked around, looked at SaaS products, looked at COTS products, couldn't find exactly what we wanted. We weren't prepared to go with that 80-20 rule, you know, where you get 80% of the products and 20% missing. We knew exactly what our requirements were, so we realised quite quickly that a loco platform would probably suit our needs. We set it on Doe, and then we were able to quickly turn around within six weeks uh, a platform for group risk. Um, I think the technology itself came online very quickly. The harder part was probably the more the change management process going around our businesses, but we had a, a lot of support from our leadership. And we were able to implement a system quickly. So what we've got today is a kind of a central group risk system and production system. We have dashboards and management reporting, so we're able to surface data about our shows very quickly and scrutinise that data and also react. So that's really important for quick decision making, but also in this kind of geopolitical environment where things change regularly, it's more important than ever to make sure we're completely on top of our productions, where they are, what's happening, and uh, what the schedules are. What Zoho products are you using for this? Zoho Creator and Zoho Analytics. So you have this data in Zoho Analytics. You're using Zoho Creator to share it. What were you doing beforehand? Because it's a huge amount of data. We had lots of unstructured data. Our production companies were on top of the production and the data that they needed to make their shows. But if our leadership was to ask, can I have some information about TV shows that have been created? Take a long time to get to them. And that was because that data was in spreadsheets. It was in emails. Some of it was in people's heads. And obviously, that's fine. But... You can't react quickly unless you have the data. And obviously during COVID, that was critically important. We haven't kind of buried this need for spreadsheets. We still use them within our business. But in terms of this specific workflow, we have a single system that's much more efficient and able to scrutinize and, and give the data back to our leadership they need at any given time. What about the collaboration aspects? You're a very globally distributed workforce. Yes, we have lots of uh, teams in lots of different places all around the world, all doing different things in terms of the types of programs that they're making. Having a single platform, it was challenging to roll out, I think. There's no doubt about it. Our change management was required, but we did have that kind of leadership support, which made it a bit easier. I think the most important thing is that the teams trained on that data, were tra trained on our system, they understood how it worked, they understood why we needed to implement this system. That made our, our process very quickly. One of the other things I think is really important to ITV is compliance. So we're very comfortable with the software in terms of its ability to encrypt at rest, encrypt at transit, very comfortable with the GDPR certifications that it puts in place, SOC and ISO. So um, in terms of global business, I'm really happy to be partnering with a business like Zoho, which takes that compliance seriously from a global perspective. For most organizations, making this kind of major process transition is hard. How did you go about it? Can you describe the steps you went through? We knew that we needed a product, so we went to seek the products and we have some trusted partners who helped us with that procedure around looking around what the right product was. We had to move quickly because COVID forced us to move quickly for this particular group risk product. We then went about understanding what exactly it was we wanted the product to do to a very nuclear degree. So lots of working with our group risk teams, with our production team, lots of communication with our leadership team, understanding completely what the product wanted to do. We then created our product. You know, one of the great things about low-code platforms is that you can output products very quickly, you can add, write code very quickly, you can deliver something to them something very quickly. And we wrote the product, it was there, it was ready, a lot of effective communication with our teams who needed to use it, and then we set about going uh, on our kind of change management journey. So actually the building of the technology was actually the easy part of the journey. Change management part actually took a, took a lot longer, but we just thought about regular communications with our stakeholders and our production companies who are going to use the product. A, you know, a series of kind of training and events like we're sure they're training. But I think the key was having that leadership support, that mandate to use the products and ensuring that our teams knew about why we were doing this. And they seemed to understand the why and that led to an easier implementation. So on the one hand, you had leadership support and also the mandate to make this transition. And on the other hand, at the same time, you had training and the various support activities to help people understand here's why we're doing it and here's what you need to do. That's exactly right. I think that starting with the why was so important. Uh, I think once you started with the why, people can accept that. Actually, the implementation was much easier. You mentioned low code. Tell us about that. Why was the low code aspect so important to you? 
or because we wanted to do something quite quickly. But we also knew that lots of it might change, particularly as COVID kind of ramps down. We saw that we might not need to ask the same questions of our teams. We might search different data. We might want to know different things. I'm also very aware that in a global environment, which ITV Studios operates in, that things change. We need to have different bits of data. So we need to adapt our systems to be able to adapt quickly. Not the most complex system in the world, but it needs to change to, afford, to accommodate the, the changes in the different regions. So we knew that if we build something from the ground up ourselves with a large development team, those kind of changes, that, that, that kind of ability to get to initial product would have taken a long time. A lot of kind of effort to get to the requirements, then to get developers to write the code, test the code, release the code. It was taking a long time to, to operate. Probably by the time that we'd done it ourselves, it would have been it would have been years. We didn't have years, Michael. We had like weeks. So we went for a loco platform because we knew that we didn't really need all the bells and whistles that kind of a, a developer gives to you. We needed a set criteria very quickly, and we could we knew that we could probably build it in a loco platform. We did a bit of testing, did a bit of playing around in the sand pit. So we very happy to afford those kind of tools to us. We were able to learn very quickly that the loco platform. We were able to build build the product we needed from from the ground up. So we sort of recognised that you know you can shortcut. The development of this kind of product without all of the things that a serious development thinks as long as you've got your requirements you've got lots of communication and mandate you could, we could build up more very quickly so we set on low code because it really gave us that agility that we needed to get these products off the ground so the speed of development was really crucial the speed to get to a product was really important in the products that we're using i think there's a number of other things that are really important to us as well you know the, the kind of the gdpr piece the compliance piece etc cetera, etc cetera. but the key function that we required was the speed to get to product. Does the low code aspect of this make changes over time easier? For example, if you want to change the reports. Yes. We found that some of the more junior members of our team have been able to get running quickly with these products, which has been great for us. With a word of caution on that, I think you have to be careful when you're making changes to these products. Just because you can change something quickly in your product doesn't mean you should. You still need to have that kind of governance layer to ensure that everybody who needs to know about the changes kind of accepts and signs off on the changes before they're made. This is a lesson that we've definitely learned the hard way. That's a really good point. I appreciate your bringing this up. Can you elaborate on this aspect, this governance? Because I think it's a pitfall that many organizations fall into because after all, you know, it's low code. We can do anything and it's really fast. Well, exactly. Micro changes are very easy to achieve within the platform. The nature of low code is that it is very agile and you can change things quickly on the fly. The challenge is, is we've got a large community of users across a large kind of global footprint who might not appreciate even the smallest change. So whilst you can quickly go in, change some low code around, change some buttons around in the interface, it's very easy to do that. You need to ensure that you have the proper governance in place so that you can Make sure you understand why you're making this change. Make sure you can convey to the team why you're making this change and then go on the appropriate change management journey. I think if you just throw things here and there, you'll quickly end up with support tickets asking you about how to do things in the system that were once very easy to do and very well understood. So this governance or change control over time is crucially important to make sure that your processes flow smoothly and you don't have lots of support tickets as you said absolutely sometimes it can feel like quite a boring and uh, laborious process to go through governance you know, to get the right kind of change in the roots and stuff like that but actually it saves time in the long term as i as you mentioned if you just throw things into prod which is so easy to do and so tempting to do with local platforms you will end up with lots of support tickets lots of teams trying to find out how to do things that they were once able to do and were very easy for them with so many users and so many developers, how do you handle rogue developers who just throw things in and say, oh, the governance, yeah, well, those people will, somebody else will handle that. I think it's just about having a quiet conversation, explaining why that was a problem and perhaps uh, just showing some of those support tickets that have come through so they understand the impact of quick and dirty changes isn't always the right thing to do. So again, explaining the why, as you said earlier. Explaining the why is very important. What about cloud computing. This also involved a migration to the cloud. YTB has a multi-approach to uh, cloud computing. You know, we often look at sort of COTS, SaaS, and cloud computing as different things. We did a migration to the cloud here. We do lots of things in the cloud. Um, we're kind of enjoying our journey into the cloud within ITV. Are you using AI in your productions? Within ITV, we were looking very closely at kind of the creating efficiencies in our workflow by using automation or, or machine learning. 
Uh, when it comes to generative AI, obviously it's a very hot topic at the moment, we have a research and development piece uh, ongoing, and that's led by this group called the uh, Global Innovation Hub, which I'm a leader of within ITV Studios. And we're doing a lot of research and development into some of the tools that are appearing uh, in the market for production. I'd say right now, technology is not quite ready for us to put into our production community. And also, ITV's kind of approach is one of looking at how we can augment and improve our creatives' work. So the kind of we're looking at that kind of concept of co-partnering with AI. At the moment, technology is not ready to implement into production, but we'll keep on researching. So right now you are watching it and seeing where things are going and whether the technology will mature sufficiently so that you can actually incorporate it into your productions in some meaningful way, maybe. Absolutely. We have a watching brief on, on Gen AI, I think as any company probably has at the moment. I think obviously there are a lot of boundaries to AI that need to be resolved, not least uh, regulatory, uh, not least copyright issues, and then just the technology itself. I think, you know, at the moment, if you would generate something, it's not quite ready to be, not ready to go into a television program to be consumed by, by an audience just yet. Rob, as we finish up, can you share advice on the change aspects of this journey? You described earlier that the change aspect was harder than the technology piece. And I think this is very common. I think it's important to start with why and make sure all of your stakeholders, your community understands why you're trying to implement something. I would also say one of the most important things that you can do, something we did, is get that leadership buy-in up front and then keep on ensuring the momentum is maintained throughout the kind of project life cycle. That was critical for us. I think without a kind of a leadership kind of mandate or a leadership support, we wouldn't have been able to deliver the technology. So I think the, the two things I, I, I would offer to, to the short viewers would be, one, start with why, B, ensure your, lead, your, your leadership is, is with you. Rob O'Brien, Head of International Technology at ITV Studios. Thanks so much for taking time to talk with us today. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Michael.